Welcome back to Retro Revivals. It's a tongue twister. We've got something special for you this week. For those of you that are new to the channel, we're going to do a recap video of our RV and the progress we've been making on renovating it. So, those of you that have been watching all along or have watched a few videos, stay tuned. We've got some things that you may have seen before, but we've also got some new commentary and some new clips of some of the stuff that we've been working on. So before we jump right into the renovation of this 76 RV, if you've been watching, you know that we went on vacation last week and we told you we were gonna keep our eyes out for some vintage campers. Well, our 2003 Forest River wound up being one of the oldest ones there, which is crazy. So here's a little bit of that vacation. We're off on our family vacation to Northern Michigan. God bless America. We just made discovery. Raise your hand if you forgot your toothbrush. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Oh, shoot. All right, so this is how you spend $60 on a gas station. Is that? <laughs> You want mild or spicy, Jack? Mild uh, spicy. Walking out, this reminded me of a scene from Dumb and Dumber. All right, so it was only 40 something dollars, but we're back on the road. You can see up here the scenery changes. It's a lot of trees. Made it into our destination of Boyne City, Michigan. Beautifully located right on Lake Charlevoix. That's where we'll spend half our trip. There it is. We made it. Kids are excited to get their bikes off. I am mostly putting water in the camper. Tyler's in there checking on some things, but we're here. After a four hour drive, we made it to our home away from home for the week. If you've been watching, you'll remember we bought an ice maker for our vintage camper, so we thought we'd give it a try. This thing was a game changer on the trip. Then came the deluge. Actually, the weather was pretty good during the week. There were a couple of good rains, but who doesn't enjoy that when they're camping? After it stopped raining, we scoured the entire state park for retro campers. We could only find this one cute little Shasta. Little Shasta. Overall, it was a super great and peaceful vacation. Without further ado, here's the beginning of a renovation adventure with Harvey the RV. We had been checking out Facebook Marketplace for a little while, looking for a 70s or early 80s RV project that we could work on. And we had actually seen this one and saved it when it was listed for $2,500. Uh, but when we saw the price drop to $1,000, we thought, yeah, this thing's definitely worth looking at. It's a 1976 Dodge Cruise Air Home on Wheels. And Tyler liked it because it had the big 440 motor and I just liked it because it seemed like it was in good shape. I also like the size so it's 21 feet long and fun fact it's about the same size and weight as an adult Asian elephant. So we had never named a vehicle before but for some reason we just felt like this guy needed a name and we went with Harvey. I like Harvey. Harvey has a nice ring to it. It just sounded kind of cool old-timey and he really just looks like a Harvey. You can get an idea of the condition from these pictures but the smell was just Wow. I, it was just wow. So some people thought we were crazy, but we went to pick it up. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, it looks nice. There she is. All right, so we just bought this camper. She's yours. Yeah. Here's a look at the innards of this old Asian elephant. We knew anything upholstered or carpeted had to go just because of the terrible smell and the amount of poop that was in here. But starting out, we were actually hopeful we'd be able to keep a lot of this, but, uh, well, you'll see what happens. It's the bathroom. Oh, gosh. Where some people might have ran away, we laid down some cold, hard cash and drove it home. I've never puked on something like this before, but this is... Right on the verge. Oh. <laughs> that is so gross. I think if you look at this carpet, you could see why the smells in here were so intense. 
Once we started tearing apart the back wall, we found a bunch of rot. Ooh, I got this wood. I wanted to make that into artwork for the wall, but I think we threw it in the dumpster. So eventually the whole kitchen had to come out once we realized the back wall was as rotten as it was. And we didn't really know the extent of the damage at this point. So everything kind of had to come out so we could assess and see what was going on. Here's the mattress making its way out. Have you ever seen a happier human carrying a urine-soaked mattress? Then we set our sights on the master bedroom, which was full of various types of poop, including cat and mouse, and also some wildlife like ants and spiders. This cabinet came down to see what was going on with the sidewall, and then the carpet in the master bedroom had to go. Here's me seeing how long I can possibly hold my breath, so I didn't breathe in any of that nastiness. There's our wall. <laughs> We identified a slight water leak that the owners told us had been prepared, but everything was soaking wet. An attack squirrel up there. After we had a better idea of what was going on on the inside of the RV, and before we started to rebuild that, we thought that we might want to check on the condition of the engine. It's got 90 plus thousand miles on it, and so we wanted to determine if it was going to be a reliable powerhouse for us. Six of the eight cylinders had good compression. A couple were down a little bit. So you can see here that it gets up to about 70 PSI. Ideally, you would like to see 100 across the board on those. This is a good indicator of engine health. And so we added some additive to see if we could bump up the compression, but it'll take time. Well, we had to get rid of pretty much everything upholstered. The driver and passenger seat were just in remarkably good shape somehow. So we decided we wanted to reuse them and they needed to good cleaning and deodorizing. If you've been watching our videos, I think I've mentioned before that I'll pretty much look for any excuse possible to use the pressure washer. So the next logical step in getting the seats clean was to give them a good hose down with the pressure washer. And since we live with teenagers, we learn new terms regularly. So apparently these satisfying types of videos are called ASMR and they can make you relax or be comforted. So if you're suddenly relaxed or comforted, there you go. You are welcome. Here's a little after shot of the seats. They turned out really well and they don't even stink anymore. And I spent a ton of time redoing this oven and the vent hood and turns out we're not even gonna use them. But we did get to make pizza in the garage and who can say they've ever done that? During a couple of cold rainy days, while I had the carburetor off, I sprayed the engine with some Chrysler corporate blue. Here you can see I rebuilt the giant thermal quad, got it bolted back on, and it's a runner. Once we were fairly certain the engine was going to be salvageable, we had to start getting to work on this back wall. It was going to need a total rebuild. So first step was take everything apart. You can see the wood here is just completely rotten in both of the back corners. Um, we didn't have a lot of stability there. We got the kids involved, helping out, making some pieces to put it back together. I should point out that we had about a four day window to do this because we had to leave town for a wedding and we couldn't leave the RV with just a gaping hole in the back wall. We ended up having to replace some of the floor. We used the Craig jig and pocket holes to rebuild the back wall. There were a few screws in our way, so we decided to take the awning down. Turns out they weren't for the awning, but awning delete complete. Once we had a general frame around the back wall, we got to work with stapling the aluminum back on. And man, we had some late nights working on this, trying to get it ready before we had to leave for our wedding. This clip shows a little game we like to play called, oops, we put the studs in the wrong place. So we needed them to line up with the end of the aluminum when we put the back panel back on. So they all had to move up several inches. Problem solved. One of the products we've been using quite a bit of is this ProFlex RV. Turns out it's pretty good stuff. We were working with the 15 degree angle on this back wall, so it was definitely a relief when everything went back together as it should. We added the trim back along the bottom and then this super sticky seam tape to go underneath the trim on the sides and hold everything together. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the way. Is that helpful? This is really pretty with the sun setting behind you and you're up with the sky and the yeah the moldy back wall. Nice. 
Isn't this romantic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the only way to work. By flashlight. Good? Yeah, I think we're good. All right. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We pulled it off just in the nick of time. Just for fun, here's a couple pictures from the wedding. Just so you don't think we always look like complete ragamuffins. So when we got home, we immediately started shooting the RV with mud. Nah, just kidding. But I did get to jump back into one of my favorite hobbies, which is pressure washing. You could see us take that huge tarp off the roof. Before we did the roof project, we were putting that on and off every time we wanted to work on this thing. It took forever. So, ooh, there was a chupacabra living under that D. So we started off basically just spraying everything down. It took off a good amount of that algae and other dirt and stuff that was on there for years before we got it. We would have liked to have kept this cool lettering on the RV, but it was peeling off, so it had to be removed. We've debated a little bit about whether to re-letter that back on, so let us know what you think in the comments. After a couple days of scrubbing and cleaning, we came away with these before and after shots. You can definitely see quite a difference. Once we had it cleaned up, it was finally time to tackle the roof. We didn't want any more leaks, and we definitely didn't want to have to deal with that huge tarp anymore. This roof was in terrible shape. It was covered with residential roofing tar on top of silicone, on top of other unknown materials. On top of wasps' nests. We pried up anything loose, scrubbed it down, rinsed it off. Um, we removed the AC and the different roof vents, added some patches over any of the holes that we could see up there. And then we got to work with priming the whole roof so that the black color wouldn't seep through the new white roof coating that we had purchased for this RV. We decided to use a rubber roof coating for this project, and this is Eternicoat by Blackjack. And basically we just drizzled it on, rolled over it, and smoothed a good thick layer around the whole top of the RV. Sealed it up and looks great. Next project on the list, new AC with heat pump. Directions? It's oh, there's this deal. Oh, it's velour. The pointy bit goes toward the front. Ba ba. Well, did you bring a screwdriver up? We brought nothing up. No. Did they give us boards? How does this come apart? How was the other one up? Does it say bring a big hammer? Are there boards? Doesn't it have pictures? Do we need to take it apart? Boards for what? Dicor lap sealant. There it goes. Oh boy. Come on, get it, get it. It's doing stuff. Yeah. Only one way to be connected correctly. The plenum assembly that goes up in there like that. You would think. Ah, Ooh. Yeah. Oh, how about this? Oh, oh yeah, that feels nice. Uh -huh. This next step was pretty satisfying because you could see an immediate difference. So in order to combat the odor problem even more, we coated everything that was exposed wood with primer. And it was the same primer we used on the roof actually. Um, and it did a good job of covering all the wood and sealing up all the, the stench basically that it was holding in. I love the projects where you can see such a distinct before and after. I mean, Tyler likes the mechanicing part of things, but I mean, you redo a carburetor, it kind of looks the same, right? Maybe to the untrained eye. Yeah, my eye's not trained. I found some 16 inch wheels to replace the 16 and a half inch rims that came on the RV. The older RVs have those 16 and a half inch rims and it's hard to find tires for them. We didn't want to get stuck out on the road with that, so we decided to go with these. I went ahead and cleaned up the rims, etch primed them first, and then went back with this ectoplasm green to give it some space spice. Space spice? <laughs> some spicy spice. Spicy spice? <laughs> Scary spice. Whatever you call them, they're spicy and they're green. And they're beautiful. Ooh. I'm supposed to say ah. Ah.
the exhaust manifold on the passenger side is actually causing us an oil leak. And by that, I mean it was cracked before they welded it, but that weld sticks up high and it actually pushes on the valve cover. And that valve cover not being able to seat properly is uh, leaking oil. So we're going to take the bolts and nuts out of the, uh, the exhaust manifolds and get it ready to uh, put some new gaskets on. All right, so here's the old one and here's the new to me one. Um, again, that big booger weld there, not helping us at all. This one does not have any cracks or welds um, previously, so that'll be great. Um, I gotta clean it up a little bit, just clean up the surfaces so that gasket will stick on there and uh, hopefully get this, get this all sealed up. The engine is so big, I had a hard time getting the exhaust manifold out on the driver's side, so I had to bend the floor up a little bit. After I got it out, and the gasket replaced, I bent the floor back down and everything went back together like it was supposed to. All right, now we're gonna put the uh, gasket in place. All right, it is a little tacky. Now we're gonna slide our giant heavy exhaust manifold into place. Okay. This is a little bit easier than the driver's side. Oh, ooh, heavy, heavy. All right. Here's sort of what we're starting with. If you want to see the, the poop situation, look back at our first couple videos on this RV. Water line out. Toilet is free. Oh, oh boy. Boy is right. Oh. Better move. Outside, I guess. Gross. All right, so the time has come to get rid of that yellow bathroom. I'm going to use this. Picked it up at the Home Depot. I'm not sure why I get all southerny when I say Home Depot, but anyway, this stuff went on pretty well. It was thinner than I thought it would be. It also had more of an odor than I thought it would, and the comments all said you need a well ventilated area. It's very strong. And at first it wasn't, but as I went on, I think because it's such a confined space, um, it did start to get pretty fumey in there. So I was taking breaks here and there, but overall just rolling it on, wound up doing actually three coats of this stuff. We really didn't want to have to try to find a new piece for this bathroom. I mean, this was the walls, floor, sink, everything in this wet bath. So thankfully it came out like new. We did decide to cut our losses with that old toilet and sprung for a new one. Ta-da! We ended up touching about every surface in this bathroom so we'd have no memory left of what the old bathroom used to look like. And, you know, everything from the new wallpaper, new shower, new toilet, new towel bars, um, everything just came together and made it look like a brand new room. We did go a little more modern with the medicine cabinet and bought one that has a built-in LED light. At this point in the process, we've had the RV for a couple of months now and it really hasn't been on the road. So we we're kind of dying to get it out there see how it ran. We also wanted to do a good flush of the black tank. We've mentioned the odors a couple times. Um, we tried to flush it here um, and there was nothing in it, but we could see things were still in it. Was, so was there a pyramid? There was kind of a pyramid. Um, so um, we wound up dumping a whole bunch of different concoctions that we saw online down there, a bunch of water. And we wanted to there's a squirrel gonna kill us. Squirrel! <laughs> um, we wanted to drive it around and loosen some of that up and go to the state park that's about 15 miles from here and flush all that out. So here's a little bit of how that went. Yeah. Crap, do you hear that? Yeah. Oh, we might be here for a while. Maybe they have a campsite. What is happening? Oh, it's boiling. Oh man, if that gets on my shoes, I'm gonna puke. And, uh, pick us up. So this was the point when we had to call one of our older kids to come pick us up. We have park ranger situation. Brewing. Play it cool. Play it cool. Oh boy. 
Don't be suspicious. 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 Hey, thanks for picking us up. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Couldn't sleep well, wondering if the camper was still here. <laughs> You don't get to see sunrise too many days. We're very fortunate today to be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is pretty though. Look, the lake. Yeah, no, it's very nice. If you break down, just holler on the CB and someone will come save you. Right. Help. <laughs> <laughs> During the test drive, we found that we had some significant cooling issues. So after we got it home, we decided we needed to address that right away. The overflow reservoir and the radiator were full of sediment and mud. And so we decided to flush those, give it a new thermostat, a couple new hoses, and give it another try. Got the wire flinger 5000, gonna try to get some of this rust off and then hit it with some black paint. Ready? Somehow it never occurred to me to cover this last night when we thought it was going to rain. So back to square one with the bumper. Can't actually do anything with it today. It's super muggy and rainy. So I think we're going to turn our attention to some of these marker lights and try to get those swapped out. Don't like that. All right, I'm going to wipe this. Oh, good as new. See? Matches my shirt. Is that a new one? That is a new one, and it works. Hey, looking good. <laughs> you wouldn't think it would make such a big difference to put these new lights on, but LEDs as opposed to dirty old. Yikes. Oh, oh did I catch that? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I might have caught that on video. <laughs> this massive branch just fell. Dang. <laughs> That's like final destination in here today. We somehow managed to avoid death by tree limb and got the marker lights installed. So on to the ladder. Oh, let's not talk about the ladder. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, so this ladder was bent when we got it and we thought we'd just try to bend it back. No problem, right? Yeah. If that breaks, I'm gonna cry. Uh, you're gonna blame me is what's gonna happen. And then well, I'm gonna cry. Yeah, cause you're jumping on it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh! oh. You did. So after the little mishap with the ladder, which was no one's fault, no one's fault, um, I worked through some of my disappointment by grinding on this bumper. Wound up putting some Pour 15 on it and getting a nice coat of black. Next up was the window seals. They were dry rotted and shrunken, and so we got online and ordered some new window seal. Adding these new rubber seals would help to make it watertight and keep out that rain. It's just going in? I don't know. <laughs> I would like to think it is. New window seal is in these windows. We'll keep going around. So after our little journey to the campground, um, we posted that video and, you know, we felt actually pretty good that there was nothing wrong with the head gasket. We didn't have signs of anything being wrong with the head gasket other than we overheated, but people kept commenting, definitely the head gasket. It's the head gasket. So um, so, I mean, you guys did freak us out a little bit. After we got back, I was talking to a friend and explaining the overheating issues. He told me about a test kit that I could buy for about 30 bucks and I could see if I had a potentially blown head gasket. So we thought we would give that a shot. This test will determine if you have combustion gases getting into your coolant, which would mean you have a bad head gasket. So what you do is you pour this fluid in um, while the engine is running and warm and after about two minutes, if it stays blue, you're good. If it turns yellow or green, that is bad, and that is a indicator that you have a bad head gasket. Yeah, those are some stressful two minutes, just staring at this fluid to hope it doesn't turn colors. And uh, in the end? Turns out the mountains are blue. Thankfully, we were able to find someone to repair the ladder for us. They welded it, and it's good as new. We were into it this deep already, so why not change the water pump? When I was putting it all back together, I broke off a bolt in the alternator. Why not add another project to the list? Removing this refrigerator should have been easy peasy, 
but we removed every screw we could find and it still wouldn't budge. So we were relieved when we finally were able to get it out of the RV. We got to work next on removing the furnace. The plan for Harvey is that we won't actually use propane at all. We'll use all electric appliances. So once the furnace was out, we got to work on removing the propane tank. It'll save us a little extra weight and we won't have to go through the expense and process of getting it checked and recertified. Next, we got to work upgrading the electrical system. And if you check out that full video, you can see my awesome artistic skills. This is our old panel and right. the new. Ooh, look at the new oh, one. Wow. Nice and shiny. Comes with fuses already. We added a battery disconnect so our battery wouldn't drain if we accidentally left something on. And we also added a converter to power our DC items when we're connected to shore power. So we tried the best we could to put these videos all together into one. As you can see, they're just little clips. If you want to see a more full version of any of those, I'll put a link to the playlist down in the description, or you can just search Retro Revivals on your YouTube and they should come up. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the conclusion, the finale of getting Harvey back on the road. We're hoping to take him camping still this year. So we're running out of time, but <laughs> we are really hoping to get there. Also, you'll want to stay tuned because we've got a 1973 Holiday Rambler travel trailer that we purchased. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on that transformation. Thank you all so much for watching, whether it's your first time or if you've been with us from the start. We're hoping to be back very soon with big changes to the interior. We've bought all kinds of things, lots of things, sinks and couches and cooktops and refrigerators and, and water heaters. All the things. All the things. So it's going to go back together quick once it starts going. So stay tuned and we will see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Be safe, guys.